We just wanted to bring a more progressive viewpoint about Appalachia to more people and also be building a platform to lift other important voices up that had otherwise not really gained the attention that I feel like they deserve. We've got Chuck Cora on the Zoom. Uh, Chuck, can you hear me? I can, I can, Jake, can you hear me? I can, you sound great, Chuck. Chuck Cora is uh, one of the co-hosts of the A Pod Latcha podcast. Uh, so Chuck, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. I've been a fan for a long time, so glad to be joining y'all. Yeah, and, and same for you. Y'all are doing some great work up there, uh, a little north of us in Appalachia. Um, and so we brought you on today. Um, to talk about JD Vance, but before that, I wanted to do. I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about about y'all's uh, podcast and, and you know when y'all got started and, and what made y'all want to do that. You and has it always been you and Callie doing it? So uh, actually, it started out with me and a, a gentleman named John Eisner, uh, not the tennis player, um, an old friend from from growing up in West Virginia, who started the show with me in 2019, December 2019. And he was with us up to uh, about April of this past year, and he left the show to pursue some other professional uh, endeavors. So Callie's been with us ever since uh, April of this year. Gotcha, gotcha. And I think I see, I think I see John Eisner on Twitter sometimes. Yeah, yeah, he's still on there. He actually works as a public defender in uh, our hometown of Parkersburg, West Virginia. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I was just telling a caller uh, earlier in the show that public defenders are incredibly undervalued, um, and I'm sure that uh, I'm sure he'd have some stories there. Are is he? Uh, oh, yeah. Is he asks me? I don't know if he is or not. It's a good question. I would. I guess probably West Virginia. Probably. Probably not. Uh, they may not have a union there. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell with them. It's a weird state when it comes to that. I'll have to ask him though and see. Might be, might, yeah, might be worth asking, uh, but but yeah, that's uh, that that's incredible work. Um, I, I value public defenders an incredible amount, so so that's really cool of him to do that. So, what made y'all want to, uh, you know, start the podcast? Yeah, so we kind of felt like media that didn't have a, I guess, hard conservative bias was kind of lacking in the region, and I think just the representation of other views and really pushing back against some of the deeply ingrained stereotypes about Appalachia wasn't really happening at least on a on a level that we felt we could be a part of and you know John before we we started the podcast he ran um for elected office uh, for a house of delegates seat in West Virginia in a deep deep red part of the state it was probably like a Trump plus 40 something district and he did better than any other Democrat had ever done in that in that district. When he ran, he still lost, but uh, but made some real inroads. And the conversations that we had on that campaign, because I helped him out a lot, um, were ones that we wanted to continue having. And we wanted there to be some sort of progressive voice for, for Appalachia, which we felt like was lacking at the time. And so we started a podcast without like a lot of um, real goals or planning in mind. We just wanted to bring... Um, a more progressive viewpoint about Appalachia to more people and also be building a platform to lift other important voices up that um, had otherwise not really gained the attention that I, I feel like they deserved. And that's really served as the impetus for it. Um, and, you know, we started out with a small audience in 2019 and throughout the past two and a half, three years have built a pretty decent sized audience um, talking about things like JD Vance, but other important things like, you know, what's happening in Appalachia, the economy, the important people, especially the creative community and the working class community in Appalachia that often gets ignored in the national media, but has such an important role. And honestly, it, you know, when you think about working class history, an extremely important role in the history of union organizing in, in the United States. Absolutely. And I think that uh, I, I think that y'all do a good job of that. I saw uh, I saw your interview with Doug Jones the other day because it came across my came across my feed. I thought that was uh, that was pretty cool. And, um, and and I've seen y'all talk to some other uh, some other progressive southern electeds. And and I think that getting some of those messages out there is it, it is important because uh, the south is not all a monolith um you know uh, adam was talking to um zach hyden last week and 
you know, the 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 perception of Alabama is such a red state, super majority Trump voters. Um, and if you actually look at who voted, only something like thirty something percent of Alabama of the eligible voters in Alabama voted for Donald Trump. So that means more people mo- more people voted for nobody than voted for Donald Trump, and also you know way more people voted for nobody plus Joe Biden th- than Donald Trump. And that's something that yeah. you you don't really you don't really get that perception from popular narratives about the South or or the popular portrayal of the South in the media. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it, you know there's some nuance involved there and it's like it's important to to tell a line of not being an apologist for the real problems that are happening in the South and Appalachia while also acknowledging those there's you know there's problems like that everywhere. There's racism everywhere. It's not just in the South. There are plenty of parts of California and New York that also experience that too. Mm-hmm. And I think that one of the biggest goals that I've had on the show is really trying to encourage people to think a little bit more open-mindedly about places. You know, Alabama, West Virginia, the geography is arbitrary, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know, the, there are lines that are drawn by politics or by geography, but the people in, inside those states, you know, I think oftentimes feel underrepresented. We've talked to many people from Alabama who are sick and tired of just hearing this whole notion of like, oh my God, I can't believe you live in Alabama. How do you survive with all, all right. these Trump people and all this stuff? And it's like the narrative that you're hearing about a place is only a small sliver of the truth of what it actually is, you know? And I think for a lot of people, for a lot of progressives that live in those places, they're really sick and tired of these narratives being controlling about a place that they love and care about and call home. And yeah, it's complicated and, and the politics of places are, are oftentimes not what we want them to be, but that disregards the real people that live there and, and the real progressive people that are trying to fight for a better place. And I think that one thing we've tried to do is really emphasize that and say like, you know, of course, West Virginia has a very, very red electorate, but that's not representative of all the people as a whole. And it's important to acknowledge that nuance. And like you said about Alabama, I mean, the way a state votes, if the only thing you know about a state is what color they show up on on the electoral college map every four years, then you know nothing about that state. Right. I could not could not agree. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.